Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of the Sweater Knitting Show. I am your co-host, Johnny Vasquez. And I'm Lacey Lene. And today we got a bunch of cool stuff to talk to you about. So what are we talking about today, Lacey? We are talking about how to find more time in your busy schedule for knitting. We're talking to a special guest, Vicki Coleman. And... We'll be highlighting your... Uh, projects that you've been sharing on uh, social media. We'll show you how we're coming along. Yep, our progress, and I think that's pretty much it. Yep. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, first up, why don't we talk about how our challenge is going. I'm going to grab my sweater here. You want to go first today? Oh, sure, first today. I'll go first today. So my hope was to get like caught up, which basically means I needed to finish the rag, excuse me, finish the raglan and then separate out the sleeves. And I I didn't get that quite that far. I almost got to that point, but I had like I was at what, five or something inches yesterday? And you needed to get to fourteen. I needed to get to fourteen. So that's like nine inches of knitting <laughs> I needed to do in one day. So I got to like twelve inches. So I still need two more inches before I can separate out, separate out the sleeves. That will get me caught up to where we are today in the 30-day sweater framework. Just starting the body. Just, yeah, just starting the body. Um, but I'm not quite there yet. So here's what I'm thinking is going to end up happening. I'm going to be just a little bit behind until we get to Yarnosphere this weekend. And then you'll have plenty of time. I'll just be there knitting all day. <laughs> so I'll get ahead at Yarnosphere. I didn't and even we'll be think good. of that. Yeah. Like if I don't finish this by Friday, I could finish it on Saturday while we're standing there. Right. Well, I don't know that I want to be standing because this is a heavy sweater. Like it's starting to turn into a blanket. It's quite large size. at this point, yeah. So here's how far this is the inside of the sweater, obviously. Everybody seems to like the back a lot because that's where all the cable work is happening. But it is, yeah, it's fairly large right now. It's gotten pretty big, yeah. I mean, I don't remember exactly what it looked like yesterday, but kind of like it's that. much bigger. Yeah. It's almost twice the size. I can't reach <laughs> to get it around my shoulders. I have to put it on like a key. Here we go. Now you're I'm stuck. getting like tangled up in my sweater. I think that's the bottom. No. Okay, no, there we go. That's not the bottom. <laughs> now it's kind of like a little like shawl. <laughs> my cable's not long enough to let this extend all the way out just yet. But oh, I don't want to lose my stitches. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's coming along. I'm very very happy with the progress. You can start seeing the cable work on the front now is coming in. I think this is going to be awesome when it's done. Like, I think so too. I mean, I was a little worried that, like, everything was just going to be super bulky and big. And it is big and bulky, but... It looks really nice at the same time. Yeah. Well, I have a sweater that's not exactly like this, but it's a big, like, bulky sweater. And I love it. Like, I, when it's cold enough, I wear it all the time. So, yeah, so I'll, I got a little bit more to do on that, and then things will start getting really interesting. I was going to join it in the round and then, like, steak it for, but I think that the steak edge is going to add too much bulk. Yeah, it's a bulky weight. So I decided I'm just going to knit the whole thing flat. Which is just fine. Yeah, I think it will be fine as well. The other thing I've been thinking about doing is... Right underneath the armpit here is to do like some one by one ribbing nice. to kind of help a little bit with fit. fit and shaping. And if I do decide to adapt the sweater for the framework, that can be the component that changes in the to help like with size and stuff. So that's sort of the goal right now. I am on my third ball of yarn. So I have finally, you know, I knit like an entire ball almost yesterday. 
It's good. I am just now starting my fifth ball of yarn. I got my yarn in the mail yesterday, so I didn't have to stop. Yay. <laughs> um, so I'm on my fifth ball of yarn right now, and I'm... I mean, I can show you. It doesn't look a whole lot different. It just is longer. Here it is. This is basically through the waist shaping, and it hits, like, right around the top of my jeans right now. So you would basically be done with your body, like, length for a normal length sweater. Yes. Minus maybe some ribbing for mm -hmm. the hem. But I'm not knitting a normal length sweater. As we know, I'm knitting a sweater dress. So I still have probably another 12, 14 inches. At least, yeah. Yeah. So I'll be knitting around in this circle for quite a while yet. I'm thinking I'll probably take... Either three or four of the skeins that I have, and then I'll use the last skein for the collar, the big cowl collar. That's going to be it's going to be removable, but it'll take a lot of yarn to knit anyway. Um, so basically, I'll make it through the length that I want, and all the leftover yarn that I have will be part of the collar. <laughs> and then, of course, like the sleeves, me finished, but that's literally like a matter of four rows. So. Uh, so every day. I take a photo of my progress and post it up on Instagram, usually in the morning from the day, previous day's work, because I usually work at it late, late at night while I'm watching Pawn Stars or Bad Ink or <laughs> Storage Wars, basically. I just record all of A&E, like every show that they make, and then I watch that all night. Like I'll watch like eight episodes in the evening. So that's when I do my knitting, so then I photograph it the next day. So what I'm going to do is take my picture right now, because I want to knit on this, but I don't want to add too much new stuff <laughs> before I have documented my old stuff. So you can continue talking while I take my photo. And if you're following me on Instagram, which is Johnny Vasquez, then you'll see my photo pop up in just a few minutes. And then you can like it. I was so impressed. I posted, I haven't been posting as often as I would like on Instagram for the progress of my sweater, but I did yesterday when I got home and I got so many likes. You guys are great. So I was I was really happy. I was like, I feel so cool. People are liking my sweater. And so I'm probably gonna start taking more pictures now because I felt really awesome after that happened. But I'm La Lace Lou, L A C E L U E, on Instagram. So find me, follow me. I'll follow you. It's great times. Um, and then uh, we'll get to all watch each other in the corners. Um, I know a few of you already do, but I, I think it's great fun. I think if I, like, if I had such awesome support all the time when I was knitting sweaters, I would just be knitting sweaters all well, the time. Well, and that's the, the goal of the 30 Day Sweater Challenge is to have that social aspect, you know, with people all over the world who are following along so you can kind of be, like, encouraging each other and, you know, working together to keep each other motivated to finish. You know, that, that was the entire purpose of the 30-Day Sweater Challenge. I think I'm going to just keep tagging all my stuff 30-Day Sweater. You should. After the challenge is done, so then we'll still have a connection. Yeah. So this would be the equivalent of my day six progress. Yes. Are you Instagramming it right now? I am Instagramming it right now. This is live. This is live Instagramming. <laughs> no, I think that is the Instagram. Like instant. Oh. My 30 day, there we go, 30 day sweater. Cool. So post that and then we'll move on to the next section. Posted. It's Instagram. also on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, it's on the New Stitch a Day account. So New Stitch a Day on Twitter. Because I, for some reason I have that linked up to, your Instagram. to my Instagram. Instead of my personal on Twitter. Weird. Yeah. So um, one thing we forgot to men mention is that we will be having a question and answer period at the end of today's show. So 
If you have questions, hold on to them for right now, and we will answer them at the end. Uh, okay, so why don't we talk a little bit about finding time to knit? Because I know a lot of people are kind of like, okay, we're through the first week of the challenge, you know, it's day eight, and I still haven't decided on my yarn. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Um, so is it too late, and if it's not, how do I find enough time to actually knit my sweater within the next 22 days? Well, I have some things that I do to find time to knit, because Bobby and I were having this conversation the other day, he's like, how do you, of all people, have time to knit sweaters? And I was like, I'm awesome, that's how. And then I told him how. Um, so, a couple of things that I like to do is always keep my project with me. So, at, like during the challenge, like it's a little harder because sweaters are bigger. As like you go along, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier and harder to carry around. But if you have it with you or like in your car or at work, then you can, like whenever you have a minute, you can just grab it, knit a few rows, get some progress on it. Um, particularly like if you're a parent and you're waiting to pick your kids up from school, there's a good 15 minutes, or if you're at, you know, a soccer game, there you go, hour, or if you're at work, you have a break time, 15 minutes, lunch time, um, those are all great times to knit. One time we do not recommend knitting is when you're sitting at stoplights. Yeah, that's not a great time. I have heard of people who have, like, finished all of their Christmas knitting while, like, Sitting at stoplights? Sitting at stoplights in the car, you know. That is possible, but if you're going to knit in the car, I would say do it while someone else is driving. So if you are, like, driving to work every day, see about getting into a carpool, because then the days you're not. Or driving. taking public transportation, yes. using a bus, a I like train. to take the bus or the train, because I don't have to drive, and I can knit the whole time, every time, yeah. Um, and I get a lot of done. And it's really entertaining, the people you find on public transportation here. So, you know, I keep myself entertained, get some knitting done, don't have to sit in traffic, worry about driving. You know, you would think since our job is essentially to knit all the time that we would have, you know, more time to work on things. But ultimately, like, I run the business acts end of the whole endeavor. So I spend most of my time answering emails and, you know, you know, ordering things and stuff and um, mostly just answering emails. That's pretty much what I do, answer emails and comments. But, um, yeah, I have to find time to knit myself, you know, because there's all these other things that get in the way from actually doing, you know, the knitting. So, like I said, I like to knit while I'm watching TV. Now, some people, they feel like they don't have the ability to do those two things at once. You know, they're kind of like, I can barely chew gum and walk at the same time. Um, and that mostly comes with practice. You know, uh, like, if you're making something, the more you, you knit, the more you can kind of not just be able to look at your knitting and read it, but you can actually touch your knitting and read it. Like, you can actually feel knit stitches and purl stitches and it's not my favorite thing to do um, you know to knit blindly but it is possible it's my favorite thing to do. to do well yeah but you mostly knit stocking it so you're just like knitting that's, all the knit stitch I know that's why I do it or I can do it with like ribbing or seed stitch but that's more muscle memory than me feeling the stitches so one thing that you could do if you want to knit while you're watching television, but you're kind of like, well, my, the point of watching television is to watch it, not my knitting. <laughs> um, you know, knit during the commercials. That's a great option. Right? Because that gives you a good solid, like, 10 minutes every 30 minutes <laughs> or so. I guess now it's about 7 or 8 minutes that are commercials out of every 30 minutes. So... Um, that's an option. I mean, we watch Hulu a lot, and they still have, like, three minutes of commercials in between segments on there. Another thing you could do is join a knitting group or just come hang out with us um, during our knit 
night. Right. It's tomorrow night at, um, at 7 Eastern, so 4 Pacific time. But if you are, like, committing to joining a knitting group or knitting with your friends, um, then you have to knit while you're there. So it's, like, at least an hour a week that you're, like, all right, I'm going to be knitting. i got to do it. And also there's the added benefit of <laughs> you want to have made some progress so you can show your friends when you get to knitting group, like, oh, yeah, this is how far I got on my sweater this week. So then you'll um, maybe work a little harder to find time to knit during the week. That's what I do anyway. Like, if I know, like, I'm going to be somewhere where people have seen, like, what I'm knitting, I'll be like, oh, I can't go show up with the same amount of, like, progress on my project that I had last week, so I'll have to, you know, step it up and knit some more. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's a few different tips on helping you find more time to get your knitting done. Um, let's see if anybody else has their own tips. I also think that if you like, if you don't want to join a knitting group or you don't have like people who knit around you. Um, Try just setting aside a night a week to be like, all right, somebody else is doing the dishes or cleaning up, and I'm going to sit here and knit for one hour. And then you just sit down, and that's all you think about for a full hour. Just, like, give yourself permission to do that, and you'll, you know, if you stick to it, then you get some stuff done on your projects, so. though. Or going to the coffee shop, you know, just get, get away from everything. Um, Lone, Lone Star lady says that she's flying to Florida this weekend, so she'll have several hours of uninterrupted knitting time. Right? Yeah. Um, flights are awesome. Actually, I have knit a couple pairs of mittens on flights, and they go pretty quick if you're using more suit weight, and I had some really long flights, and the people next to me were like, oh my gosh, that was a ball of yarn when you started, and now you have a mitten. <laughs> It's been really cool. Like it's not that big of a deal to me, but people who don't knit, it's like, wow, that's impressive. So, Absolutely. You know, you might get some extra cool points for knitting on the plane. <laughs> and you know, I love knitting in public because there's so many people that will just come up to you and be like, oh, I used to knit when I was a kid, or my grandma taught me to knit, or I learned to knit when I was in college. I should really pick that up again. You know, or People will stop and be like, I want to learn how to knit. Where should I go? You know, what should I do? Um, so, yeah, I think it's... I think I've had more conversations with random people about knitting than any other subject. Right. Like, people just will stop and talk to you, which I think is great. Like, if you have any opportunity to just talk to people you don't know, like, awesome. Do that. Cat Girl Artist says that she knits while studying to keep her hands busy while... Studying actually makes her focus better. I think that's awesome. If I could figure out, like, if I had figured that out long ago, it would have been a good thing. You know, another thing you could do, like, if you like to read, um, I use Audible to listen to audiobooks so I can keep my hand, because I have to keep turning the page and stuff, so I can listen to the book while I knit rather than having to stop and, like, turn the page all the time. Also, I can turn the book on, like, 1.5 or double the speed so I can read it faster. Brilliant. All right, well, we have a special guest for you all today. Uh, Vicki Coleman is uh, the host of the Dragonfly Soars podcast, which is a video podcast. She's got a nice little following, and uh, she's also uh, been helping with the 30 Day Sweater Challenge, promoting it through her podcast, and she has a really devoted fan base that has been uh, been participating, and she's been just a huge help to us uh, in the forums and in the chat rooms and uh, on Ravelry and such, so uh, we wanted to check in with her and see how she is progressing in her sweater, so let's uh, go ahead and hear from Vicky.
I think it's muted. Hi, everybody. I am here with one of our um, promotional partners who's doing the 30-day sweater challenge with us. This is Vicki Coleman from the Dragonfly podcast. Uh, you may have uh, seen her on iTunes, and you do a, a video podcast, don't you? Yes, it's actually Dragonfly Soars, like flying through the sky. Yes, Dragonfly Soars. Um, and uh, it's a fun little podcast uh, where you talk about your main projects and you have some of your friends on. Um, and, and we did a little segment for you not too long ago uh, that Lacey did. Yes, you did. And we were one of the very first ones on your tour. Absolutely. Well, we really appreciate you being a part of the whole 30-day challenge. Vicki has been an incredible help in both the Ravelry uh, group and the 30-day sweater online course forum. Uh, most of the time, she answers all of the questions before we even have a chance to get in there and and do anything. So, But it's great um, because one of the reasons we created the course the way we did is so that people can help each other, um, especially people who have a lot of experience knitting um, or are familiar with the framework. So you are knitting your own sweater using the 30-day sweater framework. How is it going for you and kind of what was the inspiration behind your design and your yarn choice and all that kind of stuff? The yarn has actually been sitting in my stash for a while. It was um, Miss Babs' Yowza What a Skein. I bought it a couple stitches ago. Um, we have stitches Midwest around me. Okay. And I had bookmarked it for a sweater, but I hadn't actually started one. Um, okay. Being a slightly larger girl, mm -hmm. I am constantly in the flux of losing weight or not losing weight. And I didn't want to make a sweater that was going to take me a year to make and then not... You know, and then it wouldn't fit. Mm -hmm. Having a 30 day sweater means I'm not likely to change a whole lot between the measurements and the finish. Sure. So I've been, and I wanted to make a sweater. I've made sweaters, but um, I have pictures for you. Oh, okay. I made a sweater for my son in 2007. Okay. So I made a sweater. Uh -huh. And I made this sweater for myself. And that one took a long time. It took uh, about nine months. Yeah, well, it's got a lot of color work in there. Yeah, but I never wear it because it's big and bulky. It doesn't suit me. It makes me look larger than I am, uh -huh. um, which is why I had asked Lacey to do the uh, the Never Seen Sweaters, the segment that you guys did for the tour for us. Mm. So, um, and that was the inspiration for that. So having a sweater that is, you know, well-fitting <laughs> was a big part of it, too. So this is the... Sweater so far. I am keeping right up so far with the deadlines. Okay. So I like the little bite-sized chunks. They're nice. <laughs> um, so I am finished with the raglan and I just separated for the sleeves. So and I actually uh, I added a couple uh, stitches under the arms. Uh -huh. There was a couple people on the forums asking about that because of the bust size. I didn't want to make my sleeves huge, so I actually did do extra stitches under the arms. Sure. And so, I guess for people who are taking or are using the book or taking the course, that's a big question that people have, like where do I add in that ease into the pattern? Because the pattern doesn't really specify, and that's because based off of the formula and the measurements you take, it should fit properly with a decent amount of ease as is, but there are certain situations where you know, not everybody's the same proportions, and so you might have to add some stitches. So, so for people who do have that issue, um, you can always take your bust measurement with the additional ease. And if you're not getting that gauge, whatever you think those stitches should be, then you can add stitches underneath the arm. Yeah, that's exactly what I did right when I separated. Great. So, how are you finding? That you said that you like the bite-sized chunks. Is the pace uh, good for you? Like, what's your experience been so far using the framework and designing your own sweater? So far, the pace has been perfect. Um, I like the fact, you know, you measure one day, you start knitting. I like the fact that even on the raglan increases, you're doing a smaller percentage of rows each day to account for the fact that you're you have a wider sweater mm -hmm. at, at each point. So I've not had a problem keeping up. Um, 
And you're not, I mean, you're a busy woman. You've got, you know, family. Yeah. And <laughs> I've got a full time job and other things to do. So I'm definitely, it's not like I'm at home and this is my only project. So, so, and be, right now my design, I told you, and I've mentioned on the, on the uh, chat, right now my, my, um, Sweater is very simple mm -hmm. because of the fact that I'm going on a trip. So I want to be able to just, I want this one to be a pick up and go. I've done more complex things, but right now this one needs to be a stuff in the bag, you know, in an instant and then pick up again. Right, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your trip. It sounds, I, I'm super excited for you because I, I know where you're going. But <laughs> I am going to China for the first time ever, um, assuming my work visa comes. I'm still oh, nice. <laughs> your fingers for me. <laughs> Supposedly it's coming back this week. Um, we're a little tight on time. But the, the work, the, we have a facility in China. We actually have a couple facilities. And I'm going to visit and prepare for some global implementations we're doing. Um, as I told you, I've been a programmer in the past, and now I manage a group of programmers well, as we're going around the world um, and, and implementing. We're also, last year I got to visit Switzerland, and this year I get to visit China. <laughs> Very cool. So what are you most excited about seeing in China? Because my, my wife's been to China uh, once before, so we're like both like really excited to to see what you think. <laughs> I'm not been. actually sure what we're going to visit in China for the fun parts because there there are a couple people on the trip who have been there several times. Like they go so many times that it's not even They're exciting for them anymore. <laughs> it's just working in another location. And then there's there's a couple of us who it's basically brand new, so they are kind of arranging kind of their favorite things and. The, the other guy and I that have never been both said, you know what, you guys have been, we just want to go someplace cool that we can say, hey, we went to China, we went here, <laughs> but we don't care where it is. So we're letting them kind of decide. They were looking at possibly temples or some of the cities on rivers or gardens, you know. So it will depend a little on weather. Too. Where in China are you going, going to be most? I'm going to be in Shanghai and... I think we're going to stay close to Shanghai because our only free time is going to be over a weekend. Mm. We're only really going for about 10 days. Okay. So. Cool. Well, that's very exciting. Now, I want to talk to you real quick about your podcast. How did you get started doing that? What was sort of the inspiration for you to begin podcasting? Honestly, if you watched the first couple episodes, I swore it wasn't a podcast. It was just going to be a way for me to video blog and share with uh, my mom and my sister, what I was working on. Because I had a tendency when I had a regular written blog to only post pictures of finished objects, never anything that was in progress. Mm. And I thought, hey, if once a week I kind of post something, mom and my sister, because uh, I'm in Wisconsin, but my sister's in Las Vegas. She was in California. And my mom is a couple hours away, so we never saw the in progress. Mm. Well, eventually I ended up actually having viewers. <laughs> and about four or five episodes in or whatever, I finally said, okay, fine, it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, and how many episodes in are you now? Um, I don't know. I don't actually number my episodes, if you ever look. They're just the date stamp, because I, I tend to get a little OCD if I think about the number, but I've been doing this uh, over two years. I started in March of 2011, oh, wow. and I've podcasted almost every week. Very cool. And how many, do you know how many like viewers you have on a regular basis? Approximately 500. Okay. There's about 300 members in the Ravelry, but based on downloads and people I know that aren't in Ravelry, there, there seems to be about four to 500 on a regular basis. Well, that's definitely a nice little following. And you have some very committed followers because when you had people sign up for the 30 Day Sweater Challenge, like you had the highest conversion rate of anybody. Like almost every single person that went to sign up actually did sign up. So... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we're very That's great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I do know we have a very loyal group. I mean, our, our group tends to be, you know, they're, they're committed and they stick with it for a while, so. Awesome. Well, Vicki, we really appreciate all of the help that you're providing and your support and uh, following along with uh, the program as we've been going. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you uh, in the chat room and such, and so uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, for all the help that you've given, and I can't wait to see how your sweater turns out and to hear more about your trip to China. 
That sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye. All right, buddy. All right. Well, thanks again to Vicki Coleman. Uh, she's usually in the chat room, but she's actually in the meeting all day today, so we recorded that uh, earlier in the week. Um, but, yeah, Vicki has just been a huge help to us kind of out of the blue, uh, and she's incredibly knowledgeable when it comes to knitting. So if you see her on Ravelry or in the chat room or in the forums on the 30 Day Sweater course, please tell her thank you and uh, that you appreciate all of uh, the help that she's been providing. And go check out her podcast. Yeah, you can go to dragonflysores.blogspot.com to uh, check out her podcast. It's a video podcast, and you can also download it on iTunes. Now, she's not to be confused with Dragonfly Yarns. That's a different, different, thing. different thing, but... Um, she is a very passionate uh, knitter, and um, you know we we again have really appreciated her involvement in the whole thing. So um, before we move on to seeing all of your progress that you guys have been posting on the interwebs, I, yes. okay. <laughs> I know I do. I love seeing every, <laughs> what everybody's working on. Uh, we want to let you know that the Sweater Knitting Show is sponsored by the 30 Day Sweater, uh, which is both an ebook and an online course. So if you you can kind of go either way, you can get the ebook, which is sort of like the entry level, you know, thing, and then there is the online course, which is a lot more robust. Um, so the whole framework is designed to teach you how to knit a sweater in 30 days or less. And we do this through walking you through designing your own custom fit top-down raglan sweater. Now we picked the seamless raglan sweater construction because it's a little bit more approachable for beginners but it's very flexible for people who want to do more advanced type things. And the great thing is you can use any yarn any size needle you want. You've basically come up with the gauge. You can use any stitch pattern, and you can well, you can use almost any yarn. I should say some yarns might be really hard to do with, but as long as you have even gauge, you could use any yarn. Yes, but there are certainly yarns that we recommend. And you can <laughs> adapt the framework to fit any size. So if you're making a sweater for your baby you know, newborn baby grandson, or you're making it for your husband, who's 300 pounds, it will work for anything in between. Um, we also show you how to adapt the framework so that it can be more shapely to match you, um, or it can be more flattering if you're a little bit larger. Uh, so, and we, we've created a series of patterns that we'll be releasing very soon uh, that if you don't want to design your own, you can use one of those patterns to kind of walk through the, the process for yourself, and you can adapt those sweaters to fit you. It's kind of like a template. So you just plug in your measurements, and it's like, all right, these are the decisions that are already made for you. Just knit away. Now, the online course takes things further because it covers all the same content as the book, and it actually includes a copy of the book, but you get video tutorials, downloadable worksheets. Um, we're going to be adding um, sweater calculators into the course pretty soon. Um, it includes all of the uh, patterns from the, the new pattern collection that are coming up, and we'll have more patterns that come out in the future that you can then purchase and will work within the framework on the course with additional video tutorials to support each pattern and such. Um, and the best part, is the online forum. So there's a forum just for people taking the 30-day sweater course, uh, and they are sharing their progress, and they're asking questions. They get help uh, and feedback directly from Lacey and I and other people who have taken the course before. Um, so it's just a lot of fun, a great way to sort of um, increase your knitting knowledge and uh, improve your skills and you get lifetime access to the course when you purchase it. So you can use it over and over and over again to make as many sweaters as you want. Lacey's already used this nine framework days. to make nine different sweater designs. 
using the same framework. Um, and she's got a whole bunch more planned. I, we've got we've got a, a lot of stuff planned for the sweater. So with lifetime access, you get free updates as well. So as we improve and add to the course, we take a lot of suggestions from people who have purchased it. Uh, we'll be adding more things into the course in the future. So um, it's a great value. Um, if you want to learn more about those, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash book for the book or slash course for the course. And if you downloaded your free sweater planning guide, uh, then you have a discount code in there to get 25% off. Uh, now, if you don't have a guide, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash guide, and there you can download your sweater planning guide. Just enter your email and your first name, and it'll take you to a page where you can click the download right away. And that's got a whole bunch more information in it to help you get started before you knit your next sweater. And that works for any sweater, whether you're using the 30-day sweater framework or not. It's just kind of a useful resource that we put together as a gift to you to say thank you. Um, and you'll also be able to sign up for the 30-day sweater challenge when you go to 30daysweater.com slash guide. So if you're not signed up yet, you can do that today. It's not too late. And the 30-day sweater challenge is free. You don't have to buy the book or the course. You can just pick up a sweater, start knitting it, and do it in 30 days during the month of October. And so. there's no size requirements. You can make a little sweater or you can make a big sweater. You can do whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, the goal is just to get you over that hump, over that fear of starting a sweater, finishing a sweater, getting to the end, and know that you're capable of making a project like a sweater. All right, so we're going to bring in Bobbert right now and he's going to share more about what you've been sharing online with the hashtag 30 day sweater. Hey Bobbert, how's it going? It's going. So good to see you all, good to be back. Where'd you get your hat from? Oh this is the uh, Buffalo Wool Company hat. So one of my favorite ones to wear, um, especially when I don't want my hair to be seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, but let's go and jump straight on into it. We've got... <coughs> Bonnie Jane here. Well, these are some pictures we've found on Ravelry of certain things that people have been posting. I like how she put the little day six tag. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, one of the great things is that people don't realize or don't even think about, but, like, they do this progress of their knitting and stuff, they could probably, if they do it right, time lapse it and you watch your sweater grow. That would cool. Anyways, um, so Karen, she uh, started off with these this really cool color work. I, I remember showing hers a, a few days back, um, and this is some of the progress she's had. Um, looking really good. I like it. I mean, there's, there's for how much color works in there, it's, it's, it's awesome that you know, she's keeping up with everything, so. That's great. So, um, not done yet. <laughs> um, this one's still qu quite quite a ways along, though. I mean, it looks like that they've just about finished up the bottom on that. Um, and they just got their, their sleeves and, and some of the other stuff to, to go. But coming along really good. Um, and then... Uh, Love my kids. Um, here uh, you can see she's working on her project, um, and it looks like her, her pup fell asleep on her while, while working on it. Um, but coming along, looking good. Um, so uh, Stacy Lynn, this is hers. Um, we found this one on Facebook, um, and uh, that's off of our Facebook page um, at a. Uh, 30-day sweater challenge? Is that one challenge, or is that just a group? So, 30-day sweater um, on Facebook. Yeah, facebook.com slash 30-day sweater. So, yeah, so if you guys uh, aren't following us, I recommend checking us out there. See some of the articles that we've been posting, and you could also see some of the other um, um, people's progress on, on their sweaters there, too. <clears throat> 
So we've got a few here that uh, people have sent in emails. Um, looks like we've got another uh, cable challenge going. Um, but wow. Working out their cables here. Uh, yeah, looking really cool, though. Um, and uh, <clears throat> coming along. So uh, this is uh, Judith, um, and she's she's working out this stuff. Uh, looking really really good. This um, really mixed of uh, the it's like a, a pinkish and bluish, like yeah, it's a self striping yarn. Yeah, I mean, what I like is the the little kind of like mock <laughs> turtleneck on the collar there. So cute. I bet you it's for a kid. I'm guessing it's for a kid. Yeah, this is that's one of the things I've noticed is like you can't quite gauge the size of it. Because it, it all starts out small. <laughs> yeah. So and into the Instagram. So um, <coughs> sorry. We've got Lori post a picture of herself. Um, trying it on, making sure it works. I think she's oh, wow, got. Wow, that looks great. Yeah. yeah. Um, looks like she's got her, her thing marked out um, um, for sneaking, right? Yeah, I think so. So that that's crazy. I was I remember watching Lacey do it, and I was just like, "What are you doing? Like, it's it's it feels like you're like creating this work of art, and then you're just gonna cut it." <laughs> but um, but it works. It comes out great. So I, I I don't think I'm bold enough to try it myself. But anyways, um, <clears throat> we've got another one here. I like this like white and then this like bold gray stripe in here. Um, ho hope to uh, see see a bit more. Um, and then uh, somebody else uh, posted their picture. Uh, nice little selfie of themselves trying it on. Um, Looking good, coming out great, um, great and I love that green. I mean, <laughs> you can't go wrong with green. Um, and they, it looks like they've got some cable going on in there too. But yeah, no, I'm excited to see how this one turns out. Yeah, it's looking good. I, anyways, but that's just some of many that people have been posting. So um, this is my challenge to everybody that's watching: go on social media. Um, search things from the 30 day sweater hashtag um, whether that's Twitter or Instagram and um, see what other people are doing follow them make friends like let's let's uh, let's encourage each other to uh, keep going on in their progress and uh, see some inspiration from other people so but with that that's all we got for today Great. and uh, Keep it up. Keep going. Keep working. Like it's it's coming along. I will get there, even though. I will get there, even though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, I would love to see what else everybody else is doing. So. Awesome. Okay. Well, if you want to uh, participate uh, more fully, then uh, use the hashtag Thirty Day Sweater on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. That's uh, uh, the best way for you to get found by us. Um, you can also follow us on all of the, excuse me, all of those by going to 30 Day Sweater. So either at 30 Day Sweater on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook.com slash 30 Day Sweater. Now we also have a free Ravelry group where we post a thread every day that you can put up your photos of your progress. Um, you can start a project on Ravelry and keep track of it there as well. Uh, so that is, to get to there, the easiest way to find it is go to 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry, and that will redirect you to the Ravelry group on Ravelry. Um, and even people have been posting up threads for like, hey, I need help with increasing, or I need help doing a V-neck, or how do I adjust the size? And there's been a lot of people that have been you know, offering their expertise on different things. I try to hop in there about once a day and see if I can help answer questions if I can. Um, but uh, lots of stuff going on in there. We've got, a, I think, like 230 people in there so far. It might even be more than that. And it's a very active group. Like, everyone's talking and stuff, so it's really great. Yeah, so tell your friends, have them come on over, and join in the fun. Uh, so that, uh, oh, no, we're going to do some... Question and answer for you all right now. 
Um, 30 day sweater. Okay. Sorry, I was reading. Okay. Lori Crochet says, my bust and waist measurements are the same. How could I give the illusion of an hourglass figure? So the question was directed to me, but considering that I never really have this problem, I'm going to defer the answer to Lacey. Um, what you could do, if you're going to try to make the sweater look like an hourglass figure, um, this is definitely possible, and I actually love doing this because I think it's so great. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to count the number of stitches you have for your body, um, for your actual body of your sweater, and then, I guess, divide that by your stitch gauge. So you'll see how many inches your sweater actually is. So before you start knitting your body at all, you'll need to figure out how many um, stitches you have on your needles right now. So then you can, I guess, alter from there. So what you're going to do is it should be a couple inches larger than your actual chest measurement. So you, so it'll have a little bit of ease built in. Um, that happens with the raglan. If you do not have any ease, that is, like, if your stitch, if the number of stitches you have is exactly equal to your body measurement, you're probably going to want it to add in a couple inches of stitches under the sleeves before you start working the body. That'll give you a little bit of extra room to work with. So then from there, I would say just decrease out like one time. And that's going to be at the very, um, I guess, the thinnest part of your waist, which would be usually right around your um, navel, belly button. Um, so just decrease those out real quick and then knit about an inch, and then add them back in. So that'll be, um, it talks about it in the hourglass shaping section in the 30 Day Sweater course. Um, so it'll talk about decreasing out and adding back in, but if you, your the difference between your waist and hips is virtually non-existent. So just want to do it with a very small amount of stitches. So it's just a really slight, but it'll just make a nice little like inch of difference on your shaping, so it kind of just hints at a nice shape. So I would say like one inch is great. Um, if you wanted to add extra ease so you could take some more out, that's fine too. But I would say if, you're, if it's, your measurements are about the same, just take out a very small amount. So does that make sense? Sure. <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, shoot me an email. Um, I'm going to be actually writing a post today on the 30 Day Sweater website, um, the blog, okay. about like some different like troubleshooting type things for shaping specifically. So I know that people are starting their sh shaping today in the 30 Day Sweater course. So I'm going to be um, writing about that up on there today. So look, look out for that post as well. Now, one thing that you could do that would be a little bit more complicated um, in some respects, but easier in other respects, is you can make the illusion of shaping through color. True. You could change the color. So you could make dark panels on the sides if it went with your, you know, whatever it is that you're making. But black or dark colors contrasted with a lighter color give you the illusion of the, whatever is shape is the lighter color because your body, your mind will automatically just get rid, of the black. get rid of the dark color. Like they'll just not recognize it. And so you have the illusion created of being whatever shape you design. But you could only do that if it's knit flat. You can only do that if it's knit flat? Yeah, how are you going to add in a color? You can add in a color. If it, yeah, oh, yeah. So, oh, okay, you're saying if you're knitting in the round, it would be harder to do that. Yes. Yes. So, Johnny's method is definitely more complicated, but it is something to consider. So, there is that. Are there any other questions in there? Yeah, uh, let's see. We have a question about doing a deeper V-neck. If you want to determine exactly how many increases to do, um, how far apart to space them to knit and how far apart to space them to knit the v-neck down to a certain point, say to the waist, how would I figure that out? So they're saying that they want the v-neck to come at a really shallow angle, or really sharp. It would be, it would be a shallow. Basically, you're spacing your v-neck all the way down, down here. Waist. 
So that is a very interesting question. I've never actually had that before. But what you would do is you would measure basically from where your neckline is all the way down to the waist. So how far, however deep you want your V to be. And then you would determine how many rows that is. So you use your row gauge to figure out how many rows that's going to be. And you can tell how many stitches you're going to need to increase by, you will have seen, like, increasing stitches for, like, a v-neck. So basically that's all of the front stitches divided by two. So that's how many you'll have on each side. And that's how many you'll be increasing on each side. So say I have seven stitches that I need to increase, and I'm going to have... 70 rows. I'm just doing that number. It probably would be way, way more than 70 rows. You'll divide um, basically the whole length of your body from here all the way down to however deep you want it to be by the number of stitches that you'll be increasing. So say I have 7 stitches and 70 rows, and I want it to go all the way down to the bottom. So I'll be increasing every 10 rows. So divide the whole length of the body down to wherever you want the V to be by the number of stitches on each side, and that's how many rows like, you'll be increasing. It. Now, you could do basically the, the same thing and just change the increases to decreases if you were doing from the bottom up. Yeah, if you were doing a bottom-up sweater and not using this 30-day sweater course, like, you could do the same thing if you wanted to make a really long V. But that's, that's how you would do that. That's really cool. I should write something about that. Like, I have never thought of that. Good call. All right. Uh, let's see. Now, we have our weekly giveaways. Tomorrow will be the last week for this week's giveaway. The last day for this week. The last day for this <laughs> week's giveaway. And we'll announce the winners in the evening uh, hangout at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we probably won't announce them right at 7 p.m. Eastern. but They will be announced during the hangout. So we have a couple questions about the giveaways. First of all, if you want to enter the weekly giveaway, right now we have two prizes for this week. I don't know if we're going to have another one this week or not. Um, at this week ending on Wednesday. We'll have a new giveaway that starts on Thursday. Uh, two prizes right now. One is a sweater's worth of yarn from the Imperial Yarn Company. And it also comes with a pattern to make yeah, the sweater. It's a, it's a beautiful so yarn. Excited, like you should enter just for that. It's incredible. There's also a $100 gift card to the Buffalo Wool Company uh, from the... That's totally worth it, too. So, <laughs> regardless, you should enter because so it's awesome. To enter, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash giveaway. Now, some people wanted to know, how do you see how many entries you've got? I'm not sure. <laughs> so, you can email me, and I'll take a look and see if I can find out. At the very least, I can tell you myself. I can go and look and tell you how many entries you have. Um, I, there should be a way to see, but I'm just not positive off the top of my head. Uh, now, someone else wanted to know, do we have to enter each week's giveaway, or is can you enter once and then you're good till the end? Uh, for each weekly giveaway, you enter each week. Now, you, enter, you can only enter your email once for, your, for one entry, but the more you share the giveaway to other people, and they sign up, the more entries you get. Yeah. So you get extra entries for getting other people to enter into the giveaway. But you get like a lot of extra entries for getting other people to sign up. So they get one, but you get like eight. So, you know, it's worth getting other people to sign up because you have a lot better chances for that. Um, so again, go to 30daysweater.com slash giveaway in order to enter the giveaway. And there was one other question. Oh, we also have an overarching, like, month-long giveaway that I still haven't gotten up. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have it up by then. Somebody wants to get my Instagram name again. It's L-A-C-E, Lace, L-U-E, Lou, Lace Lou. And that's on Instagram. Granny says, when I get to the underarm division for the sleeves, do I need to mark a certain spot for the beginning of the round? Um, no. Um, if you're not doing any, like, color work or anything, you don't have to mark a specific spot. Um, if you will be doing shaping for, like, 
hourglass shaping, increase shaping, decrease shaping, that kind of thing. Then you would need to mark underneath each sleeve, so you would have a place to um, to increase or decrease, whatever you would need to do. Uh, but I, if I'm not doing anything specific as far as color or texture, I just do it like right from where I joined in the round. So I just put a, a little marker there. You don't even really have to do that, but that's what I would recommend. Uh. Do you have to be present at the Hangout on Wednesday to win? No, you don't have to be present. Uh, Juliet in Boot says, I received emails whenever I got new entries, and if you click the link in that email, you'll see how many entries you have. Oh, awesome. So the system should just update automatically. So if you haven't received an email like that, then you probably don't have any additional entries, uh, and you'll want to check your spam folder just in case. Just in case it went in there. Yeah. Uh, let's see, where do you go to enter? 30daysweater.com slash giveaway. How do you join the Hangout? The Hangout, you'll just come to this page, 30daysweater.com slash live, and it'll be just like it is right now. Um, just, we're going to be here for like three hours, just knitting and chatting and hanging out and Announcing talking about whatever. And, yeah. Yep. And if you have Google+, Plus. We will be inviting a few people into the chat room also, right? Yeah, so follow us, uh, circle us on Google+. 30 Day Sweater is our page. Um, I'm hoping to have something up on the website soon where you can just join there. Uh, but you might have to just search for 30 Day Sweater right now to, to join in there. All right, well, that seems like all of our questions for today. Uh, it's been another awesome episode of the 30, I'm oh, sorry, the Sweater Knitting Show, sponsored by 30daysweater.com. And uh, we will, at 7 p.m. Eastern is our hangout tomorrow night. Uh, that's 4 p.m. Pacific, and we'll be hanging out for about two and a half, three hours. So if you can't make it right at the beginning, that's fine. We're going to be here. We're not doing any special programming, so it's basically just a, a social gathering where we sit and knit and work on our sweaters. Um, so I might be able to get a little bit further on mine tomorrow night as well. I got one row today. Good job. I got, I got a couple inches. We'll see you guys uh, back here again tomorrow at 11 sorry, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And if you miss any of our live shows, you can always go to 30daysweater.com slash show and see the most re the, all of our past episodes. Um, you can also find us on YouTube at 30 Day Sweater. There you'll be able to subscribe to the 30 Day Sweater show. And we're working on getting no, the show. No, the Sweater Knitting Show. Sorry, the Sweater Knitting Show. No, 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 the, the, the channel is 30 Day Sweater. But you can subscribe to the Sweater Knitting Show, right? It's you subscribe to the Thirty Day Sweater Channel. Okay, channel. Yes. But it's not this show, or it is this show. I'm so confused. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> oh, this is why I don't control a lot of the internet things, because I always make Johnny fix them anyway. Yeah. So, um, and pretty soon we'll be have this on iTunes as well. So we're looking at getting the podcast or the show up on iTunes so you can take it on your portable devices and, and join along there. Remember, 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry to join into the uh, Ravelry group and share your progress there. Use the hashtag 30daysweater to share your progress on other social media platforms. And if you want to... Get the 30 Day Sweater book or course. Go to 30daysweater.com slash book or slash course, and you can... Or if you just want the sweater knitting guide, go to 30daysweater.com slash guide. All right. You guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.